kuna watu wata waste masaa wakipingana na wewe you are doing what god called you to do they are busy fighting you they will waste their lives ah, i said they will waste their time i don't want anyone to get excited before you get transformed you must get transformed first then the excitement will be a true excitement welcome to bmi online church services every tuesday and friday every sunday thank you kumbi mungu alikuwa amepanga ukae kwanza single upate pesa kwa na kusaidia kwanza kwa hiyo muda ya kukaa single unatengeneza pesa wakija kusema tutahakikisha anakuwa maskini unaingia kwa ndoa the world is suffering because we have mentoring pretenders people who will fake a smile yet they are dying inside people who will show you teeth yet their heart are bleeding having faith does not mean you will smile when you are supposed to cry having faith means you will trust god even when you are crying marafiki wanaweza kukusahau maisha inaweza badilika lakini mbingu hatitakusahau mungu angali na mpango na wewe The growth will disappear. And now, no, walk. Let us see. Walk, walk. Walk. Walk like someone who is going for a dance majestically. Uh, yes, yes. It is done. It is done. Nasema kama hawezi kukuachia kampuni, wasikuachie diabetes. Nasema wasikuachie diabetes. Kama hawezi kukuachia pesa, wasikuachie kansa. Kama hawezi kukuachia kazi, wasikuachie magonjwa ya ndani. Na tangaza leo, madhabahu ya kwenu haitakuzuru wewe. Madhabahu ya kwenu haitakuguza wewe. Madhabahu ya kwenu haitakushika wewe. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Children of God, what a beautiful morning again. The Lord has enabled us to come together and share the word of God. I believe today again somebody is about to receive from the Lord. May the Lord minister to you in a mighty way. It's a great honor for all those who have joined us i believe you have worshiped and i believe all other sessions have been of blessings to you so now i want us to join together as we go straight to the word of god so that we may hear what the lord want to conclude this service with today without taking much time i will request that you open with me in the book of philippians chapter 2 verse 3 and we will go up to verse 11 philippians 2 to 11 my bible says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourself for Each of you should look not only to your own interests but also to the interests of others. 5. Your attitude should be the same as of the of Christ Jesus. 6. Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be 
grasped. 7. But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. 8. And being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above other names, that at the name of Jesus, that is 10, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. 11. And every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Speak to our lives, our God. Transform us today and allow the entrance of your word to bring understanding. We pray that you will minister to us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Child of God, I want to talk today on a topic entitled the secret behind greatness. The secret behind greatness. Child of God, God wants us to be great. God wants us to be mighty. God wants us to rule and to dominate. God wants us to control and to have power. God wants us to have dominion over all things around our lives. And beyond that, God wants us to walk in His kind of greatness. God wants us to be great for He is great. And every human being want to be great every single person want to be great we all need greatness in our lives and we all emulate greatness we all want we all wish to be great but the problem is greatness is not the fruit of the holy spirit neither a gift of the holy spirit greatness is something that comes as a result of some formulas being observed. Hallelujah. So when you observe some formulas, you become great. The same way when you go to school and you listen, you graduate, you achieve something. Greatness too comes as a result of some few formulas that have been observed to the letter. And when you observe them, you become great. I believe there are so many formulas. But today I will only touch on like four of those formulas that the Lord has deposited in my heart to tell you on how to become great in what you are doing. Many people have not been able to reach the level of greatness that the Lord created them to reach just because of ignoring some few things that the Bible has given us. You know the Bible in one way is coded and you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal some few secrets to you. Jesus one day told the disciples that unto you have been given grace or opportunity to understand or to hear or to get to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Not to everybody, but you have been given that opportunity to get to know and to hear about the mysteries of the kingdom. You know, child of God, not everyone gets to get uh, that opportunity to understand and some of the coded things, some of the coded formulas that are hidden in the Word of God that makes us to reach to the level of greatness that God wants us to reach. 
many people have come with big voices and when they speak you feel like if they are moving mountains but when you look at the result of their voices you realize they are only empty tombs they are only empty vessels they are making noise without news how can you reach a place of not just making noises and you start making noises how do you move from making noise in the area and your noise becomes news is when you start observing some formulas you must understand child of god between people who command things and between people who talk about things and they don't move there are no many things there are small formulas that they must be observed let me tell you child of god many people have come up but they have not been able to sustain themselves up because coming up is one but maintaining the ability to remain up is another one maintaining the standards is another one longevity in being up is another thing there are formulas that makes you to come up but there are other formulas that allows you to walk in permanent greatness many people have not been able to remain great in their lives though they appeared great they appeared with noise and a lot of things but they disappeared within no time because what they came with were not the true formulas they used you know when we are putting fire uh, some people will use firewood and others will use uh, uh, we call them uh, majani so when you put leaves the fire can come like stronger but because the leaves are not so strong with time you realize that the fire is disappearing but if you're using firewood you can be assured that there will be longevity of that fire it may take long before it comes up but it will stay there so i want to ask you child of god are you carrying fire from uh from firewood or from just some uh some dry leaves if you are carrying fire from dry leaves turn back today and listen to this sermon if you are carrying fire from firewood and you want to still sustain it Turn and listen to what God wants to speak to you today. God wants you to be great. Hallelujah. If you hear me say, I will be great. For God wants me to be great. Hallelujah. So there are some few quotes behind greatness. The greatness that everyone wants to have. The greatness that all of us we are busy fighting for. The greatness that everyone is wishing, dreaming, want to have. There are some few quotes behind it. Child of God, I want you to hear chord number one towards greatness. To uncord it. When you uncord it, there is nothing else that can stop you. You will move and become great. It's called humility. Somebody say humility. Humility is one of the greatest weapons that many people have lacked. And that's the reason why they are not great. Humility. Let me try and define humility. What is humility? Humility uh, comes from a, um, a Latin word. Humilitas. Humilitas. What is it? It is translated like humble, like from the earth, like law and when you look at it you come to find what does it mean it means not regarding ourselves as more important than other people including those who have achieved less than we have and it implies judging ourselves not in comparison with others but in light of our capabilities and the tax we believe god has set for us on earth did you hear me i repeat it means not regarding ourselves as more important than others including those who have achieved less than we have and it implies 
judging ourselves not in comparison with others but in light of our capabilities and tasks we believe God has set for us on earth that is humility in short humility is considering others better than ourselves humility is accepting that we are not the only ones who are able there are others who can humility is accepting that it is not always our effort that makes us reach somewhere but God's grace is what makes us move humility is accepting that beyond our knowledge there is a power beyond our ability there is a power beyond our capability that makes us move and that power is the power of God humility is accepting that even though others are coming from behind they are able to pass us and they are not they are, they are able to go ahead and we are we have nothing to fight about their success humility is to accept that other people can make it in life and they can even make it before we make it humility is to accept that those who went ahead they did not do magic so we cannot fight for us to reach where they are we can learn from them humility is having a teachable spirit humility is having a listening ability than a speaking ability that is humility how i want to bring it down again what is humility Humility is the ability to elevate others in front and you know that you wanted to be there. Humility is the, is the, is the room that comes into your heart to allow others to appear better, yet you know that you too can be able to be better than them. Humility is the game of elevating others. But more than that, humility is the opposite of pride when we talk of humility we are talking of opposite of pride and uh, when i want to explain to somebody what is humility i look at so many things when i come back to myself i remember i will never forget the day i was in a place called cataloni and i was praying there and i was fasting there and i was asking god only one question i was telling god please god tell me anything that can hinder me from doing what you want me to do from achieving what you want me to achieve from reaching the greatness you have released in my life and god said axon you have power you have everything but you need humility and i turned back to the holy spirit i said holy spirit on that one i think i have already gotten it i am a people person i'm very humble i listen to everyone i talk with the mighty and i talk with the young i talk with the people who have nothing and people who have something i don't have those issues of uh, regarding on other people like less than me and the lord said axon that's your problem the first level of pride is to believe that you have no pride and i was like god have mercy on me please i never knew that the first level the first class of pride is to believe that you have no pride the time you start believing that you are humble then you are no longer humble you are entering into the world of pride people why because pride you don't measure humility if you measure your humility that i know i am humble i know i am humble then you are no longer humble then you have started developing some pride in you let people around you determine if you are humble or not but if people around you cannot believe that in your humility whatever you believe is not true every time you do introspection on your life you find like if uh, for sure on this side i am humble my friend then you have started developing pride god sent me to tell you today go back to him and ask of him to have mercy on you 
Let me use a very simple example. The Bible where we read, the Bible says, let everyone, verse 4, the Bible said, each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Then it goes on verse 5, it says, Your attitude should be the same as of Christ Jesus. Your what? Your attitude. Because, child of God, if you want to go beyond levels, you want your altitude to be great, you want a higher altitude, then you have already to check on your attitude. Because your altitude will be determined by your attitude. The way you appear and the way you behave will determine where you will reach. The way you talk and the way you treat people will determine where you are going. So always check on your attitude. Ask yourself, is my attitude like the one of Jesus Christ? Because I've said it, child of God, you will never go beyond the level of your attitude. The way you behave and the way you appear will always determine where you are going. Jesus Christ knew from the beginning that he was God. He knew that he had everything that God needed to have. He knew that he was among the creators. He knew that he was the word that created the human being. He knew that clearly. But the Bible says that from the beginning he knew that he was God and he had the nature of God, 100%. But made himself nothing. Taking of every nature of a servant. He brought himself down. He who was God, he agreed to come down with a purpose not just to come down because many people confuse two words. They think being meek is being weak. Child of God, you may be meek, but meekness is not weakness. And if you think that any person who is meek is weak, then you are confused. I came to tell you, it's only the meek who will inherit the earth. If you want to take control over the earth, learn to be humble. Learn to be meek. And I say it again, meekness is not weakness. Child of God. He realized that the only thing that can take control on this earth is by coming and walk in the nature that no one else can understand. Why? Because the first Adam, when he was given dominion and power, when he was given everything, he never considered uh, humility as part of his game because you know any humble person will always refer back to the giver of whatever you are carrying every humble person will always have time to consult back to whoever gave but adam never got in room to consult god i think he got drunk of power he got drunk of con control until he thought i've been given control over everything i can make every decision i want pride and that pride made him to make some decisions that costed his life. And that's why the second Adam realized, my first man, Adam, was captured out of pride. I will come in humility and there will be no room where Satan will be able to find me. Because Satan himself fell from heaven because of pride. So he knew everybody whom I want to catch, everyone who is supposed to fall must be measured by the measurement of humility by the thermometer of humility if they if certain realizes that in you there is some temperatures of pride then just know that certain will be a closest person to you because he knows every manifestation of pride is a sign of fall whoever cannot remain on the throne is a person carrying pride a person full of pride is a person who will never lead. I want you to hear me and hear me clear, child of God. Many of us, we may reach far, but many of us, we are not able to sustain the move we have because in us, it has, Satan or God has seen pride in us. Don't forget the Bible says, God resists the pride people. 
and even their ways are resisted by God. But the humble, the humble, he elevates. Do you want to be elevated by God? The formula on earth to go up is to use the ladder. The formula in the spiritual world to go up is to use the knees. The more down you go, the up you go. Child of God, today I come to tell you, change what you think you know. Take what God wants you to know. God resists the pride in their ways, but the humble of heart, he elevates. He sent me to tell you today, check again your ways. Are you humble? Is there any sign of humility in you? How is your language? How is your talk? How is your perception? How do you look at other people? How do you even greet other people? You know some of the people, they went to schools like the ones we went to. But when they are talking, you feel like if they are holding some things on their teeth. When they are behaving, when they are walking, you feel like if they are the ones who made the earth. You feel like their bodies are not made of the soil, their bodies are made of gold. When they walk, you feel like, oh my God, I come to tell you, child of God, God wants you to recheck back your life. Whatever you are looking at, as long as your nose does not look up, it always look down. It tells you, it reminds you that we came from the dust, we will always go back down. Please be humble. Please watch over yourself. Please change your talk. Please change your behavior. Please change the way you approach people. Please change the way you talk with others. Please humble yourself. You want greatness? Humility is the key. So the Bible says God, Jesus, he was God, but he realized that being God without achieving is nothing. He realized that I have nothing in this godliness of myself, in this throne of myself, in this position. What makes me God will be determined by what I will achieve. So he realized the only way to achieve what I want to achieve, I have to remove my position to go down so that I may gain a higher position. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Probably you have never been promoted because you have never gone down. The time you will allow yourself to come down, God will find how humble you are now and he will be able to promote you. Child of God, I told you, it's only pride that makes us to snatch God's glory from his throne. And whenever you snatch God's glory, remember I told you, anyone who bl play around with God's glory, God has a way of sending them to school. <laughs> and uh, child of God, never wait for God to humble you because he has a, his own ways of humbling people. Uh, those ways of God are not always good. Sometimes he allows things to happen, to, uh, to appear to our lives that are tough and they humble us the way we did not expect. I told you a guy in the Bible called Nebuchadnezzar played with God's glory and he one day said that he's God and God realized that Nebuchadnezzar started now going far. His pride has taken him to another level. So God decided to teach him. So God sent him to the university to start agriculture. And he studied agriculture for seven years. You understand, my friend, if you are in the university for seven years, unless you are Kichwamalenge, if you are in university for seven years, you can only come out with a PhD. Because four years degree, uh, two years master's, and one year of PhD, and you come back with a doctorate. And I believe when uh, Mr. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar came back as a doctor, Dr. Nebuchadnezzar, when he came out, he knew how to honor God. He understood what is humility. Yeah, I come to tell you, child of God,
Do you want God to take you to the university? Allow pride to control you. If pride takes over on your life, then you will go to the university. When you come back as a doctor, you will teach us humility. You will tell us how to behave before God. You will tell us how to behave before people. You will tell us how to measure ourselves and how to put ourselves in the classroom uh, where we, we belong. Please, kindly, child of God, be humble. God sent me today to tell you, be humble. Be humble. Mighty people who have changed the world, they learned that secret a long time ago. Mighty people who have transformed the kingdom of God learned that secret a long time ago. Powerful people who are doing wonders learned that secret a long time ago. You know, child of God, by God's grace, I've been traveling uh, out, uh, here and there. And uh, one thing I've learned, <laughs> uh, people who don't have anything, they are make noise a lot. <laughs> people who don't have, they are noise makers. <laughs> Uh, let me show you an example, for example, you know, uh, I am looking at an empty vessel, you know, an empty vessel will always make noise, when even it falls down, you will hear a lot of noise, but if it has something in it, when it falls down, you don't hear noises, so people who don't have, they make a lot of noise, even let me give another example, child of God, people who don't give in church, they are the ones who talk of sadaka a lot, <laughs> people who don't, don't, don't tithe they're the ones who talk of sadaka people who don't even know how to give in ministries they always talk of offering oh you know our money we cannot uh, count of it we cannot understand where it is going we cannot understand what is happening and just ask them how much do you give you'll be surprised they don't give why because people of pride they have nothing I have a friend of mine who always say, if you find you are, uh, you are, you are like an uh, app always, just understand you don't carry anything. People who carry the Ark of Covenant on their shoulders, they don't lift them up. They always allow the Ark to bring them down. So if you find somebody still like this, he doesn't carry any Ark on him. My people, God sent me to tell you, humble yourself. I told you, many Christians, pride has made them to be like chickens. <laughs> Hence, when they are making noise, they may not make noise for the whole day you think they are about to release a crate of eggs. And when they give out, you find that they only gave one egg at, at, a, at a day. And you wonder, all that noise from morning to evening, was it just there for you to give out one egg? Why? Because they talk too much, but they don't achieve a lot. Pride makes you get distracted. Pride always makes you get distracted. You become a talkative person than an action uh, person. You don't make actions. You don't make moves. You don't achieve things. You don't bring tangible things at, uh, on the table. You talk much and you want people to know who you are. And you find somebody is busy telling you, do you know who I am? Whenever you find, by the way, child of God, I can tell you this. Whenever you find somebody telling you, do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Don't answer them because they are looking for an answer themselves they don't know who they are because you cannot keep on asking us do you know who i am and do you know who you are just let your actions let your achievements let your doings speak of you we have heard of you for a long period can you allow things to speak let us see things that's why you are giving ourselves positions that are not even known you hear people calling themselves name. I believe tomorrow or after tomorrow we'll have a pops because we feel like being a pop is no longer the highest position. You want to become an act pop. We want to have big positions, but you look at what now those positions are giving us. Nothing. Nothing. Pride. God wants you to humble yourself. Can I talk to people when marriage? Please. There is no way a marriage can be led by two people. A family is an institution that God ordained and he said a man is the head. My sister 
If you want to be something else, you can look for any other position. You can be the neck, you can be, I don't know, whatever you want to be. But the head must be one. Pride has made many women in their families to take positions and want to become like they are the ones controlling. They want to show that the men are no longer in control. They want to show that they are the heads. Please, humble yourself. You may be in control of finances, you may be in control of, uh, you may be more talkative than your husband, you may be probably more accurate, more uh, orator, more uh, gymnastic mover, and you know how to do things. But you are not the head. We don't become heads by what we, we, be, we, we, by what we say. We are heads by the ordination of God. So please, humble yourself. wengi wanakuja kwangu wananiambia wamepigwa na ukiangalia nini nilifanya awekelewe <laughs> unagundua kweli hii mdomo hii ya kiburi mwanaume alishindwa kuinyamazisha na nguvu za maombi ndio kwa maana alisukuma hii kidogo na ikawa <laughs> so please why do you want to be <laughs> kindly can't you humble yourself lead from behind if you want to lead but humble yourself I don't want to go much there so when we talk of humility child of God relationships are dying because of lack of humility people are losing jobs because of lack of humility people are losing great positions because of lack of humility and God wants you to humble yourself today God wants you to behave in the manner that presents God's attitude. The attitude of Jesus, who was God, but yet he accepted to humble himself. Please. All those things don't bring out result. Even if you humble yourself, we don't chase things away of our lives because of big voices. We chase things away from our lives because of the power we carry. So when we speak, demons go. When we speak, uh, op op oppressions go. When we speak, uh, depressions go. When we speak, the suppressions go. When we speak, not because of the big voices we use, but because of the power we carry. So differentiate things, child of God. Being a talkative person does not make you successful in chasing away whatever is surrounding you. Many people, you have heard them confessing things and they go opposite of whatever they confess to why because it's not our word that brings result but the power behind our words so please people who carry power they understand that power is fire and the only way to use that fire is by using it calculatively they are humble humility is a sign of wisdom humility will prove that somebody has wisdom. You will be known as a wise person due to the level and the manifestation of your humility. So please, remember the Bible says, a, fool, a foolish person, while quiet, people believe that is a wise one. It's until you open your mouth that the people realize, oh, this is not a wise person, this is a foolish one. So measure your words. Don't speak too much. Be humble. Don't misbehave and let people put you in a class where they are not supposed to put you. Learn to humble yourself and learn to understand that being humble does not mean that you are stupid. People may humble themselves and yet they are still the ones in control. If you hear me say amen. So I have spoken a lot about humility because I believe God wants you to hear that. I believe God wants you to humble yourself. And when I go back to the scriptures, I look at Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. I look at Jesus in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of uh, Revelation. Revelation 5, 1 and 8. There, there are some few things the Bible says and John was taken into the spirit and John was shown some things and John was told this. This book 
has been sealed and we have been not able to find somebody. We have not been able to find anybody who can open the book and break the seals. In heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, and nobody has been found. We have been looking for somebody who can be able to open this book and we have not gotten anybody. So John started crying because nobody was able to open the book. And one of the angels who was talking to him came to him and said, one of the, uh, the elders told John, John, do not cry because the lion of the tribe of Judah will be able to open the book and break the seals. And uh, when John heard that, John was so much curious. John wanted to see the lion coming and open the book and John was so much expectant and as John was looking at the lion coming he was so much surprised that instead of a lion a lamb came and John was like but you said a lion will open the book but this is a lamb. I was expecting a lion. Because the difference between a lamb and a lion is that a lion is always on the move, attacking, roaming. A lamb, and the Bible says it was a lamb like was, it was looking like it has been slain. It was just walking like on the masses of life. It, it has been slain. Surprisingly, John was told, keep quiet. He saw the lamb coming, that lamb that has been slain coming, and it opened the book and broke the sails. And John was like, oh my God, you mean even the lamb can open the book where nobody on earth, nobody in heaven, nobody beneath the earth has been able to open? A lamb has opened it? And the angels, the 24 elders, the four creatures, all of them removed their crowns. They went down before the Lamb, and they said, Worthy the Lamb of God, seated upon the throne, we crown you with many crowns. They started worshipping the Lamb, and John was like, Oh my God, you mean where we were expecting a lion? A Lamb has come and achieved? Oh my God. What was Jesus teaching John? Jesus was teaching John that either I come as a lamb or I come as a lion. What uh, my appearance is not what determines my work. I can appear as a lamb or can I, I can appear as a lion. It's none of your business. What I will achieve is what will determine. So what God was teaching us he was telling us that humble yourself. Even if you know you are a lion, sometime learn to appear as a lamb. <laughs> Even if you know you are a lion. And whenever you roll, people run. Sometimes learn to appear as a lamb. If you are a lion, and if inside you, you are a lion, either you appear as a lamb, you will still achieve what you want to achieve. Because our appearance only distracts the eyes. But what is within us is what counts. So please, learn to appear as a lamb, even if you are a lion. Please. Treat people, some people, when they see a lamb, they come closer. When they see a lion, they run away. So please, you are making people running away from your business. You are making people running away from your ministry. You are making people running away from your, your vision. You are making people running away because always you are appearing like a lion. Learn to appear like a lamb. Let people see the achievement of a lion. But let your appearance be an appearance of a lamb. If you hear me say amen. Please achieve as a lion. But appear as a lamb. That's the lesson Jesus is teaching us today. Humble yourself. Even if you are the one leading that move. Humble yourself. Even if you are the one talking. I was telling you child of God. We have traveled and we have seen some few things. You find people traveling going to the airport with suits. Wamefunga time shika huko ukiwa unaona wanatembea hivi mamiwani wanakuja hivi alafu unaona mwingine kana vaka tracksuit kumbe wale wa masuti na mamiwani na matai zinashika huko ni mabodyguard wa huyo wa tracksuit na unaona wanajua ni kama wao ndio wataendesha ndege my friend you come to realize oh my god the people who have things, they have learned how, on how to appear simple. And those who don't have things, they always try to uh, maneuver things to prove that they have. You know those who have? They have nothing to show off. And those who don't have? 
they always try to sustain us to show people that they have so that people may believe they have please <laughs> please accept who you are by humbling yourself this generation where we are I want you to understand this child of God this generation where we are people are not being hired because of the strength they have in their bodies people are being hired because of the strength they have in their mind so <laughs> change the way you appear and minimize on the way you appear maximize on how you think <laughs> God bless you because you'll humble yourself I look at somebody else I have spoken of Jesus appearing like a lamb yet he's a lion I look at the 24 elders the Bible says they are 24 elders. They put on white robes and they have crowns and they have thrones. Even them, they have thrones in heaven. But because of humility, they have decided to leave their thrones. And their crowns are down. And they are on their knees and they lie down without looking at the robes they put on. And they are down always speaking. Don't changing words. They only say one word, some words. Worthy the Lamb of God seated upon the throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Day and night they are doing that. Yes, they know we are 24 elders. We are the elders. Sisi ndio kusema. Sisi ndio wasea. Sisi ndio wenye mgeni. Tuko na sisi na vitivietu. But what makes them to be having that position in heaven is nothing else but the humility that they cannot compromise. Do you want to become great? Humble yourself. Do you want to go far? Humble yourself. Child of God. I was looking at this. Why did Jesus accept to humble himself? Because Jesus knew that this humility will pay. Let me tell you this. Whoever tells you that Jesus humbled himself for no reason, just he just humbled himself, will be lying to you. He humbled himself because he knew that humility pays. He knew that there is a name that is above other names. And that name cannot be given to everybody. It will be only be given to only one person who will agree to humble. And he knew. That's what we have read. The Bible says, because he accepted to humble himself until dying the death, even death of the cross. Therefore, therefore, the Father has given him a name. That is above other names. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus knew that behind this humility, there is greatness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He knew that behind my humility, there will be greatness. For me to be given a name that is above other names, above all other names, I have to humble myself more than any other person. Because I told you, the humble you become, the higher you go. The Oh, you agree to go in the kingdom the higher you become one day the king the, the uh, one day the, 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 the disciples came to John and they started talk, talking to John and John told them uh, listen to me John uh, by the way let me tell you this John was the only man I know in the Bible uh, in the in the history of the preachers of the Bible who was rebuking uh, rebuking people yet they come running to him and nyoka sijui nyinyi nyinyi ya wakora wezi mnaiba mishara na wanakuja wanamkimbilia wewe leo nikikuita tu wewe mkora wewe unasema hiyo kanisa yako na hiyo ukora yako kaa huko but John alikuwa anawaita nyinyi wezi mtocheke na mishara yenu na bado wanakuja wanamuliza na sisi maana yake anaambia nyinyi ni waroge na wengi wezi na wanakuja wanamuliza na sisi tufanye nini ambia na nyinyi msidhulumu watu mtocheke na mishara yenu wengine na sisi tufanye nini John had that grace and John his church was flourishing. His, his, the, the congregants were adding. They were coming in a big number. And when they were coming in a big number, John played a game with Jesus that is beyond what I can explain. And that's where I want to conclude this part one of humility. John was in control of his church. John was in control of his ministry. John was the one, Yendi alikuwa kusema, and suddenly there comes a man called Jesus he's just passing around that is in the book of I was looking at that one in the book of John chapter 1 
and verse 26 to 28. John 1, 26 to 28. John commands or starts the conflict between him and Jesus. He's the one who provoked it. As I told you, child of God, the conflict of mature people is not a conflict of pulling each other down, but it's a conflict of elevating each other. Do you hear me? I repeat. Humility causes you to understand that if I want to do anything in your life, it's to elevate you, not to diminish you. Not to speak evil about you. Not to make people see your weaknesses so that they may love me and hate you. There is nothing in the kingdom like loving and hating. By the way, I always tell you, children of God, in this kingdom of God, we don't compete. We always compliment. So if you are in a competition, you are not in the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, we don't compete. What is causing you to compete is the lack of humility in you. That pride is that what is pushing you to compete with people. You always want to compete with everybody. If you are in the kingdom of God, you will not compete. You will compliment. If you hear me say amen. So, child of God, what does that mean? If I preach, you thank God. That what I preach, you cannot preach. And if you preach, I thank God because what you preach, I cannot preach. When I listen to my sons, probably sometime I listen to my sons, Elijah, Howard, uh, uh, Pastor John Muley, Pastor Alfred, uh, Kubai. When I listen them to uh, their preaching and I say, my goodness, even if I was being given, be given that microphone to preach, I cannot preach the way they are preaching. They are preaching far better. Sometimes I sing, I am a singer. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Sometimes I sing, even if I have a voice like a uh, uh, blessed voice. So, but when I sing, and when my son Gile sing, uh, I realize that, okay, I, I, I may have the knowledge of singing, but glory be to God, Gile knows better than the way I know. When I listen to my son David or Moses playing keyboard, and I listen to them, or I listen to my son uh, Benjamin playing drum set. Uh, Sometimes I will listen to them, and I say, oh my goodness, since 1990 something, I used to play those instruments. But what they are playing right now is contemporary, is on the top. If I try to do that, I will only be covering some shames. But then they are doing their works. <laughs> So you must understand what you, you may have a knowledge of something, but some people know better than you. Learn to appreciate others. They know better than you. You may be in the same field, but they are do, in their own field, in their own doing, they are doing better. Accept, agree with them. Don't fight people. Don't try to become bioteca. Don't be, try to become your everything. You know everything. You are the only one who can do everything. No, 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 no. Learn to agree with others. Some people went ahead of you. They know better than you. Even if they know better than you, they are not taking your position. You may be leading them, but they have knowledge on some things better than the way you have. Agree. That will make you great. Tuitikane watoto wa mungu. Tuitikane vipawa vya wengine. Itika ya kwamba huyu anajua kuneliko hapa, na huyu pia anajua kuneliko hapa. Hello? Hello. Don't try and wanaanza kujiua tu na wewe ingia studio, utoe tu ka album kwa sababu ulisikia mwingine alitoa. Utakufa. Utaenda kutoa sauti uko na nyongoka huko unataka kugufa. Paka ukitoka huko shingo isha gonjeka. Unataka tuna huko mwimba. Ah, kwani wewe tu unataka enter tu unataka na imba. Na mimi nitaimba. Ni yani kama karatasi. Utakufa wewe, utakufa. Itika wewe au uko mwimbaji, wewe ni muombaji. Ama wewe ni shemasi. Kubali, eh? Sote tujapewa sauti rafiki yangu. Kuna wengine hata ukiimba, unajua unasikia mtu kawaambia msesekeze sauti, msikize maneno. Tuongee, uache kuimba. Kama ni maneno unataka tusikie, ongea. Sema niko na poem. <laughs> Lakini kama ni wimbo tutasikiza na sauti, sasa usitusumbue. Kubali wenye wanajua kuimba waambie, mimi nilikuwa nataka mniimbie aka kawimbo. Unakuja kuna sauti nyingine, baba, baba, sasa baba nini? Sauti yako ni mbaya. Kubali wengine wanajua. Wapatie na nafasi wafanye. Alo, wengine wakiimba, watu wabarikiwe. Usijiforce. Acha nikupatie mfano. Toa hii sawa usiko. Tulikuwa kwa mkutano ya baba mwingine. Huyo baba ni mhubiri mkubwa sana. And that man of God was about to preach. Akafungua Bible. Nakitaka kupreach. 
wimbo ikaja kwa moyo wake akaanza kuimba kale ka wimbo tuzo na Friday akianza kuimba kwa kawimbo wimbo ulikuwa very simple anaimba tu anasema wa milele wa milele mungu wangu just simple like that and all of us the glory of god came upon us we fell down we started praying we started crying people were filled with the glory of god shock upon us on sunday another friend of ours who was in the meeting went to church he was the preacher that day he stood when he was about to preach he said i will do what that man did so he turned to people he said everyone before i preach lift up your hands Say wa milele wa milele mungu wangu nobody answered oh my goodness we were all of us bored what are you doing the glory of god never came down so he said no you guys you are not serious on friday somebody sang that song and all of you you are filled with the glory of god today i'm singing it you are singing like if you are not serious you guys you are not serious my friend <laughs> you are not the one who causes us to be filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit? You, you are coping. <laughs> you are trying to show that you too you can do it. In the kingdom of God, we don't operate that way. Please, focus on what God called you to be. Many people think being seen in front makes them leaders. They forget that mighty people, mighty leaders are always behind. I will never forget the day Renard Bonk said that today we are winning souls of millions in Africa because David Livingstone, they paid the price of their blood. They struggled with ministry so that we who are coming after them may be the winner and now reap of their works. He realized that he came to reap, but he is not the one who saw. Some people were able to sow before them. So accept that there were people powerful before you, and there are other powerful people who will come after you. Learn to accept others. Even in your place of work, agree that there are other people who can do better. And remember this child of God. If you don't think that God can have other people who can do better, ask a man called Elijah. Who went before God and he told God, God, I'm remaining, I'm remaining the only prophet into this story. I'm remaining the only prophet. And God told him, Elijah will prove you wrong. You're not the only prophet remaining. There are 7,000 prophets who have not bowed before Baal. They are just there. You don't know them, but they are there. So listen, child of God, the fact that you are on top, it doesn't mean there are no other people who can go on top. The grace of God has taken you there. Humble yourself. There are 7,000 people who can preach better than me. There are 7,000 people who can do better than you in the place of work. There are 7,000 people who can do better than you in your family. There are 7,000 people who can do better than you in business. But God has given you grace. Thank God that you are where you are. Thank God that you, are, you may be the one doing what you are doing today. Don't think because you are good in what you do. The grace has taken you there. I say the grace has taken you there. Humble yourself. I say humble yourself. I say humble yourself. That's one secret. So I was telling you, child of God, the conflict between John Baptist and Jesus Christ. Let's go quickly. John began it in John chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. When he saw Jesus passing, and he said this. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of men. And I'm not worthy even to touch and to untie his sandals. Jesus was not talking to John. Jesus was just passing. But John provoked him. And John said, this is the Lamb of God. And he pointed at Jesus. And everybody who was looking at John removed their eyes on John. And they looked at Jesus. And let me ask you, serious child of God, can you do that? You are doing well in your area of business. You are doing well in your area of ministry. You are doing well. 
in your place of work and suddenly you turn people attention from you and you say this is the lamb of god and people are like we thought you are the lamb of god who are you showing us now and john is like no i cannot steal someone's glory because i have gotten attention of people listen child of god many people have failed pride has come because they have gotten people's attention what they forget is that the same way you get people's attention that's the same way that attention can pull you down to a higher tension that will never come from. <laughs> John said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of men and I'm not worthy even to open his sandals. And when John pointed at Jesus, suddenly everybody moved from John and they started looking at Jesus. And when they started looking at Jesus, they started following Jesus, hallelujah. And Jesus realized that John has baptized me and he has sent me with people. He has given me followers. He has prepared the room for me and he has given me people. And Jesus said, I have to reply back. I have to show John that he is not the only one who knows how to elevate people. I will speak about him. So in Matthew 11 verse 11, the Bible says that Jesus himself spoke to people. As people followed him, he replied to John. He said, I will hit you where you will never wake up. I will show you that I know what you are doing. So Jesus replied, Matthew 11, 11. He said, among those born of a woman, they have never raised, they have never risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Among those born of a woman, they have never risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Those are the words of Jesus. Why will Jesus say that? Why did Jesus say, why did, uh, did Jesus avoid to say, uh, among those born of a, of a man? Why of a woman? Because Jesus knew he was not born of a man, but was born of a woman. So Jesus was telling people, even myself, I'm not greater than John the Baptist. <laughs> Jesus was telling people, even myself, John has told you that I'm the one who takes away the sins of men, but even myself, I was born of a woman. In terms of being born of a woman, I'm not greater than the John, John the Baptist. Yeah, so uh, there, is, there is an area where John is greater than me. Those who are born of a woman, John is a great prophet. I'm not greater than him. <laughs> and the people are like, you are confusing us? Yesterday it was John talking of you, and now today is you talking of John? Oh my God, what is happening? Who is who now? Yesterday John said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of men. And I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. And today you are talking of among those born of a woman? Nobody. No one is greater than John the Baptist, which means including me, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because there is something that you have to understand here. Oh, hallelujah. When John said, I'm not worthy to entire his sandals, what was John saying? In the Hebrew system, there were three classes. How many classes? Three classes. There were the class of the Lord, who is the owner of the house. There was a class of servants, Hello, servants who were serving in the house. And the third class was the class of servant of servants who were slaves. Now, listen, John was the Lord because he was the one in control. Are we together? John was the one in control. John was the one leading. John was the Messiah at that particular time. People never knew Messiah. So when John pointed at Jesus, what was John telling people? In this house, I am not the Lord. In this house, I am not the servant. In this house, I am not the slave. Because the work of the Lord was to come when he's entering the house, the, 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 the servant is working in the house, and the work of the slave is to open the sandals of the boss so that the boss may enter the house. So John removed himself from being the boss. He humbled himself. He removed himself from being a servant, and he removed himself from being a slave because he said, I'm not even worthy. To open his sandals. So John humbled himself from being the lord of the game to the level whereby he has no position. And that's how Jesus realized that among those born of a woman, there is no greater man like John the Baptist because he realized that his humility 
was on a higher level. You want to give it greater among those who are born of women? Learn to humble yourself. You want to become powerful among those who are born of a woman? Learn to humble yourselves. So I go on and I finish on this. When you read John chapter 3 verse 20 up to 30, one time John the Baptist decided uh, to finish the game that was going on between him and Jesus. You remember John spoke of Jesus? You know Jesus has spoken of John? John said, I have to, hand, to, to, uh, to handle this game and finish it. The disciples of John came and they told John, John, you know what? You, the man you've shown us, Jesus, is now baptizing many people than you. Many people he's baptizing than you. And they were expecting John to say, you see, I will tell you his weaknesses. I will tell you he's an illuminati. I will tell you. <laughs> it's the way we always speak. Whenever you hear about somebody's doing great, you say, no, those people have power to attract minds of people. Those people are using witchcraft. No, 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 not everyone who is succeeding is using witchcraft, please. You, if you are not succeeding, please turn back to God and tell him, God help me to succeed. Stop accusing people wrongly. So John was told that Jesus is doing better than you. He's baptizing many people than you. And this was the answer of John. John 3, 22 to 30. We'll find that answer there. John answered in verse 30. He said, I must decrease for him to increase. I must decrease for him to increase. My purpose is to disappear for him to appear. And the people kept quiet because they realized that now the answer is beyond their understanding. They thought John will say, no, 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 no. You will see. I, I presented him before my people and he ran away with my members. I presented him before my people and he was able to go and start. I cast him. I cast his ministry. He will not go beyond three months. He will not go. No, 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 no. John never said that. John said, I have to decrease for him to increase. Child of God, you have never died for anybody on the cross. People you have, it's the grace that brought them. The things you have, grace brought them. And the things you don't have, things you don't have, they are not yours. I've learned one thing, never to fight over things which are, not, which are going away from me. As long as I'm in God's hands, everything that goes away from me, I understand that God has given it permission to go because whatever belongs to me, God protects for me. Hallelujah. Allow your heart to understand that things that are not yours, they are not yours. Don't fight over things that have gone. There are graces that are not yours. When they go, let them go. If you fight a lot, you'll eat grass. <laughs> Be careful. Child of God, there are things which God allowed to go. And when God allows them to go, let them go. If you hear me say, I let them go. There are people you have loved a lot, but when time for them to, come, to go comes, they will go and you will not do anything. Humility will tell you, thank God for those you have. And that pushes me to tell you, when you are treating people, don't treat people according to what you see in their lives. Treat people according to what God has in plan in their lives. Because you may treat somebody today wrongly, and tomorrow that person becomes the only source of blessings in your life. Child of God, Humility tells you that greet people the same way. Hug if you're hugging people. Don't give people keys in terms of your hand. I, I know right now, Corona has given many people room. People who don't want to shake hands. People who don't want to mingle with, uh, with uh, nobodies. Corona has given them room now. They are saying, you know, we are not coming together because of social distancing. Yes, pride not social distancing. Even people who are, who are socializing by far, they still have a way of smiling and showing humility. Humility is not known by the things you force yourself to do. It's known by the things that comes out of you naturally. There are some things that come out of you naturally. They prove humility. Don't force yourself to smile so that we may see you are humble. We will know if you are humble or you are not because humility brings things naturally. You want greatness? Be humble. That's what made Jesus and John conquer the conflict that people tried to bring among them because they knew how to elevate each other. You want to go for a child of God? Elevate the other. 
agree that someone is doing well. Agree that somebody can do better. Agree that other people can do well. Agree that other people can lead. You are not only born to lead and others follow. Other people can lead. Agree that other people can transform. Agree that other people can do better than you. If you agree that and you start living that, then you are becoming great because God has a way of honoring innocent people. God has a way of rewarding humble people. God has a way of elevating humble people. Are you humble? Now, I said I have four secrets. I've only touched one secret. Are you ready to hear the second one? Join me as I continue with this series. Join me as I continue with this series of secrets behind greatness. Next time, as the Lord will enable us to release them one after the other. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are ready that at the end of this topic, greatness will manifest in our lives. We will be great in our area of service. We will be great in our ministry. Great in our place of work. Great in our businesses. Great in every area of our lives. Our God, creating us a clean heart and help us to humble ourselves before you and before men. Help us to be humble. Help us to look at our attitude and how we behave, how we treat people, how we deal with people, how we accommodate people, how we treat people, how we talk to people, how we behave with people, how we take the seriousness of values of people. Help us, dear Lord. And as you help us, that will cultivate in us a room for greatness and will become greater. But our God, every place where we have not been humble, any place where we have considered ourselves like we are the worthiest people, we are the holiest people, others are not worthy, we are the only one who are worthy, have mercy on us, forgive us our God, have mercy on us. Anywhere we have allowed religious activities to take control over our own spiritual mind. We behave like we are the ones who died on the cross. We behave like we are the ones who served people. Have mercy on us, our God. Help us to deal with your people with humility. Help us to deal with your people with observance. That we will be very observant to treat your people with respect. To work with people around our lives with love. And that's how we will achieve your purpose in our lives. Help us to be great. And as we move on with this topic, as we move on with this series, our God, your power in our lives will be real and mighty. We humble ourselves in Jesus' mighty name we do pray and believe. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 God bless you. As I said, join me on Tuesday as we continue with what God wants us to go on with. It.